In this video I will explain what we know about the technical documentation requirements under the GPSR and I will also demonstrate at least one way you could possibly create your technical documentation. Let's imagine that I sell this foldable chair so that we have some sort of starting point. Now the GPSR, uh, at least in theory, covers all consumer products sold in the EU. So we don't need to select a module we can get straight to it. Oh, I need to select the general module. And um, there's a lot of discussions around the technical documentation requirements right now. As this comes into force in December uh, 2024, and many products are already covered by technical documentation requirements. So if you sell electronics, toys, PPE, medical devices, you should already have a set of technical documentation, but the GPSR expands this requirement to essentially all consumer products. So what do we need? Well, what do we know about the technical documentation requirements under the GPSR? Well, everything we have to go on is under Article 9.2, or obligations uh, for manufacturers. And what we need is a general description of the product, essential characteristics relevant for assessing its safety. And this statement should be read in connection to point one, so it's actually a general description of the product and essential characteristics relevant for assessing its safety. An analysis of the possible risks related to the product, solutions adopted to eliminate or mitigate such risks, including the outcome of any test reports related to tests, conducted by the manufacturer or the third party. And I think this is a convoluted way of saying, what have you done to comply? And well, what would that mean for a foldable chair? I would need to make sure that A, I have identified a certain standard, B, that I have designed my product according to the standard, and C, that tests has been carried out. And uh, we need a list of relevant European standards. Right, so we have a template. Let's use that as a starting point. General description of the product. Product name. Um, foldable camping chair 2025. Let's call it that. Model. Let's call it um, ABC 2025. Batch. Let's imagine that we had this this chair, this, this specific production run uh, started or completed in September 2024. Materials, 100% nylon, aluminium frame. And this goes beyond just a general description of the product, but they don't they don't really give me the specific details. So I just added everything I could think of. Essential characteristics relevant for assessing its safety. This is cryptic, but it's a foldable chair and that comes with certain risks. Um, chair folding mechanism, for example. We don't really have more than this to go on. This is what's written though. You need to specify the essential characteristics relevant for its for, for assessing its safety. And in this case, it is a foldable chair and, and that is an inherent risk. What else? Flammability. Maybe, maybe. Most likely not, but it, it's, it's a potential risk. An analysis of the possible risks related to the product. What could that be? They don't give me a lot of details here. Uh, at least not if we only if we strictly look at Article 9. But one possible risk, we can call it risk 1. Um, foldable chair collapses and injures person. Risk 2. Um, fingers s stuck in folding chair, or uh, we can just call it folding mechanism. This has actually happened. Uh, people getting their fingers broken or even cut off. That's what I've read anyway. Um, risk 3, nylon fabric 
flammability. There's a lot more that can be said. This is just a very brief introduction. You can go really deep when it comes to a risk analysis. But this is what I'm this is what I can think of. I'm not an expert in, in folding camp like foldable camping chairs, just to be clear about that. I'm sure if you ask um, world leading experts in the in, in, in that industry they will have a lot of other risks. This is just a demonstration. But these are indeed three potential risks. Solutions to Solutions adopted to eliminate or mitigate such risks and the outcome of any test reports. Well, let's describe the steps I would take. Step one, um, we have identified uh, applicable European standards. Step two, we adjusted our technical uh, drawings to comply with the uh, chair folding mechanism uh, safety requirements under standard under say ENXXX I will actually have to look for the specific standard step 3 um, a sample was sent to Intertech on well, let's say Intertech uh, Hamburg on October 15th 2024 test report number um, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 that's just to trace it to, to, to a specific test report test report issue date okay this could be this could be this could be one way that we we, we demonstrated we have we have identified standards, we made adjustments to the product, and then we sent it for testing. That should reasonably make this product safe, or demonstrate safety. Finally, we need to list re relevant European standards, and this we, will, this we know by now. So how do we find these? Well, we have to go back to the requirements list, and you can go to the standards section, where we link to a list of harmonized standards on the European Commission website. We download this document and here we are. And guess what? The first one on top, EN581, Auto Furniture, Seating and Tables for Camping, Domestic and Contract Use. I actually knew that. That's why I picked this camping chair as a case study. So. That's, I will go back to my technical documentation. I will insert this standard right here, because this is the standard I have that I comply with. I use this to demonstrate that my product is compliant with the provisions under the GPSR, and that's the purpose of my technical documentation. Call it technical D. What should I do with this? Well, if I rem rem remember correctly, you need to make sure that you have the second documentation stored for a certain amount of time. It could be 10 years. Um, we don't really know how often these documents will be requested, but if it's anything like a declaration of conformity, it could be by the customs, it could be that Amazon will request these documents in, in the future. Um, it could be market surveillance authorities when, when they when they uh, when they carry out uh, market surveillance uh, activities like stealth purchases from websites or just routine checks by contacting you and so on. And let's just see what this can, might actually look like in when it's when it's finished. So you're just downloading it. All right, let's see technical documentation. So yeah, this is this is my technical documentation. This is what it will look like. I could probably do more. I could probably add an image. I don't think that will hurt. I have my essential characteristics and I wish I could be more specific, but this is really vague. We we don't have any guidance document. We don't have any blue guide. We don't have anything else so far. Um, risk analysis, that's, that's not a new concept, so that's maybe a bit more straightforward. These are just very, very brief examples. There's a lot more that can be done when it comes to risk analysis. Um, solutions adopted. Um, I think my process here is quite clear. 
we tie it to uh, test report and then we have a list of standards. This could be more than one standard. And and just to just to re it, just to repeat, this is all based on what you will find in in Article Nine. So you want to learn more about this? You go to to Article Nine in the GPSR.